Hey guys, welcome to another video here with Queen City Reefs and more. Hold on, we interrupt these messages just for a quick update. As you can see, my beard is back. The consequences of shaving your beard, white hair is growing out. Not sure what that's about. Uh, but it's all because I shaved it all off, not because of age or anything like that. <laughs> if you are new to the channel, you consider subscribing. If you know, hit the like button, comment below, and share the channel. Without further ado, let's go back to the video. Today, guys, we're going to discuss the ice cap CO2 scrubber. Uh, it's been a bit over two months now since I installed it, and I know I was going to keep you posted on how long it lasted. I think the problem with that is that I've had different issues come up, not around it itself, but me either having to turn off the skimmer because it's pulling out too many nutrients out of my tank, which is kind of pelling out my corals. If not that, you know, I forget to turn it back on or whatever the case is. So, so I finally did. I'm gonna show you some clips now. The next few clips is gonna be of me actually changing the media and going to start this process all over. You know what, I just realized what I have in the background here. <laughs> I'll, I'll do better at this, but let me know. So I'm, I'm thinking of this being my main spot of where I actually record video, where I actually have to talk to you straight to the camera and then show clips of what I'm talking about. I still have a lot of content that, I've, that I need to put out so that you're up to speed on everything that's going on. You'll see a lot of videos that, are com that come out that are not fully the way that I want them to be. Like right now, as you can see, I have this camera. I actually have it on a tripod, I have it light. If I didn't have this light, you'd see a lot of blue. Just let me know what you think. Do you prefer this setup here? I'd, I'd really like to have a spot where I actually sit down and chat with y'all. Tell you, you know, what I've done, what I'm doing, show you clips of what I'm talking about, whatever the case may be. In this video, of course, it, this is an update to the ice cap CO2 scrubber, what my thoughts are on it. Let's go ahead and roll this video here, show you what I did to change the media out, uh, discuss how much media there is in there, show you exactly what the pH was before the media change because I actually had been exhausted already so you'll see what it, it truly is without CO2 scrubbing pretty much. Then I'll show you what it is after the new media is in there, what it raised the pH up to and what my final thoughts are on having a CO2 scrubber. How many of you use a CO2 scrubber and what size tank do you use it and how long does this media last you? Uh, if you're not using CO2 media to boost up your pH, what are you using? Without further ado, let's get to the video. All right guys, so I figured uh, this is the time to document this on the CO2 media that I keep, not on purposely postponing, but th things get in the way and you know i just want to do some quick maintenance i make the, you know I, I change it real quick and all that and so right now i want to actually document it as of today what i use is bulk reef supply i buy the 7.5 pounds of co2 absorbent media and i'm refilling it now this is actually from fish of hex i use this really for the di but i figured it worked perfectly for this as well uh, let me show you something else real quick. So you'll see that the pH is at 7.9. Normally I have it at 7.7. .7, so I just took it off. I knew it was exhausted already because as you can see, you see the 8.0. And every day I had been seeing it go from 8.3 to 8.2 to 8.1. And so I'll, I'll see if I document that. But uh, to be honest, um, I'll just really focus on the main points. It's at 7.9 right now that I took it off. And so we're refilling it now. And I'm gonna connect it to the I'm gonna connect it to the skimmer and we'll then see how long it takes for it to start rising again. At this time it is 2.22 in the afternoon, and I'm gonna go ahead and finish filling this up and then I'm gonna connect it. So I like uh packing it all the way up as much as I can. Uh you'll see some dust residue here, but I'm not too worried about it. This does not need to be sealed enough because it's not like water's passing through it. Oh look, it's dirty in here. I'm noticing this, I'm gonna have to clean that up. If you were to use something similar that uses this so that you're not, so that there's no water leaks, then you definitely wanna make sure that this is absolutely clean because if not, then you'll have a leak. But this is not made for that. So let me grab uh, something to clean this real quick. But I wanted to show you real quick how I pack it up all the way to the top. 
Now I do have a question for those that use CO2 scrubbers. I'm not sure if you use this one in particular. So my question essentially is for this one, but your thoughts on those that you use. So I know like for BRS, the canister ones, uh, and I think I've seen another one too, where they say, you know, you can add like a tablespoon or something of water at the bottom of the canister to help produce that humidity that's supposed to help the CO2 scrubber. Now, I don't know if to do that here. I mean, I literally would have to use, I guess I should have showed you what it looked like and you probably see it on my other videos, but there's a plastic that goes all the way to the rim that does not allow the media to go all the way to the bottom. And there's a foam deal. I'm not sure how you would even get water there unless you like would pour it through one of these tubes um, that go to the bottom. But those that have used it, do you actually use the recommended way of putting water there or not? I mean, I have actually seen it function, but I'm not sure maybe adding water would make it last longer. Or maybe there's an issue with, you know, if you don't use water, then it would only use about 60-70% of the media before it becomes exhausted and, you know, you waste about 30% of it. Not sure, but just a question for those that you do use CO2 scrubbers. Do you put water at the bottom of your canister? All right, so here it's all nice and neat. This, of course, I just put it over here. And we're gonna connect this device right there. And we're gonna turn it on, but I gotta put the cup back. Cause I went ahead and used this time to um, clean the skimmer cup. Actually, my wife did, she's helped a lot today. So let me uh, put this back and then we're gonna turn it on. And then uh, for you will be, again, you already know the magic of YouTube. Uh, for you will be a few seconds. For me, it will be maybe an hour or two. Once I start seeing it up, I'll record it. But guys, I think I'm gonna take this time to uh, remind y'all if y'all are not already subscribed, consider subscribing. I'd really, really, truly appreciate it. It'd mean a lot to me. It'll help this channel out, help it grow. Those that are subscribed would really appreciate it. If you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. Those that have been continuing to be subscribed, I really appreciate it. Those that have been commenting and liking, I truly appreciate it. Those that are not, please consider it. Uh, and so, all right, let's, let's move forward. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and start this up. So as you can see, I have the tube right there. Now I keep saying that none of this is permanent because my intentions are to at some point start cleaning things up. This line runs all the way from the air silencer all the way down to here, of course, where the CO2 scrubber is at. For those that don't know how a CO2 scrubber works, Pretty much that in there is CO2 media. It's a mixture of calcium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide that will strip the CO2 from the air, from ambient air. So as you can see here, the air silencer that pulls air from you know ambient air is then sucked in through here and then passes through the CO2 media to strip the CO2 out so that the air that's going into the tank is not air with CO2 pretty much, right? And that's what causes then for the uh, pH levels to go up. So at the time of me connecting this, you'll see the pH being at 7.92. It was at an all time low of 7.87. So we'll monitor that 7.92. I just turned it on at 237. While we're waiting, I do have a question for everyone. I see all these nice tanks where the cabling is amazing. The cable management is amazing. You don't see a lot of cables. They're all behind something. They're all tied up in zip ties or that Velcro ties or whatever the case is. And yes, absolutely it looks amazing. It looks clean and most of the time it looks safe. So my question to y'all is how do y'all Go about cleaning y'all's equipment when it comes time for that. Because if I see all the recommendations that you should be cleaning your equipment every other month, or some say every three months, some say every six months, I'm more on the every six months, once to twice a year bandwagon. <laughs> so when I've tried, actually, there was a point where I did do Velcro most of it, but then it came time to having to clean it. And at that point, I was like, oh no, I am not going to uh, be untying, tying, untying this all the time. 
So I decided to leave it untied, and that's why you see a mess when cabling because I want to clean these pumps as more often than possible. But one of the drawbacks was that, or one of the things that made me not want to do it is because I had the cabling so nice and neat and having to undo it. So how do y'all do it? Do y'all have some quick connects? Do, did you have to modify anything with the pumps to be able to even be able to take it out, take it to your sink or next to your tank or whatever you do? That's my other main question for this video. How do you, those that have awesome cable management manage to clean your equipment? And if you're, if I guess maybe the answer is you do go through the trouble of untying it and so on and so forth and redoing it. How long does that take you? Cause man, I just, I'm trying to somehow figure that out. But anyways, guys, uh, see you in a moment. We'll uh, monitor how this pH goes up. All right, so this is gonna be the final update of tonight on this. As you can see, it is 628 right now and it is at 8.06. This is not the highest that it will get. It actually will get 8.1, 8.2. And I'm actually happy with that. I've noticed that the intake of alkalinity that these corals take end up being a lot more. So I have to dose a bit more often. Yes, I'm still manually dosing. I prefer it that way, but I am thinking of uh, putting a dosing pump that I could still manually control and not let Trident be the one to control it. So for now, I'll keep an eye on the CO2 scrubber. Once I start seeing it go back to the 7.8, 7.9 is when I know that the media has normally run out. I will keep an eye on that so that I can tell you exactly how long this lasts. Um, aside from that, I'll catch you in a minute and we'll go from there. I figured one more, one more, why not, right? It is 8.29 p.m. and the pH is at 8.12. Again, when I don't run a CO2 scrubber, then I would have my my pH fluctuates between 7.6 to 7.8. When I have the CO2 scrubber running, I fluctuates between 7.9 to 8.2, and some I've seen it go to 8.3 and I will record tomorrow so you can see in a 24-hour period what it looks like then. All right guys, so it has been 24 hours, approximately four, 24 hours since I connected a fresh, <laughs> since I've connected a fresh batch of CO2 in the CO2 scrubber. And as you can see here, my pH has gone up to 8.23. All right guys, the verdict is in. So I changed the media on August 2nd and today is August 16th. But I wanted to show you my pH is back to 7.8, 7.9. So it's not going as low as 7.7, 7.8, but just the fact that it's under 8.0 already is telling me that the media is uh, wearing out. And that puts us at exactly two weeks and one day, which really it has actually been doing this since maybe two days ago, little by little. But uh, pretty much I would say that the media lasts is two weeks. I'll give you specs on my tank. It is a 310 gallon. The opening up top, I don't know if this matters. I, don't, I guess I don't know if this matters. I haven't done enough research to tell you the, the logic behind it. But just in case you're wondering, the tank up, up from up top, it is eight foot long, 30 inches from front to back. And so that it, it's straight open. I don't have any glass covers or any netting or anything, not yet at least. The sump down here, well, it's a tide line uh, sump that is really made by trigger systems. Uh, it's a special sump that they do for planet aquariums. This one is actually six feet long by like maybe 24 inches or so wide. I don't know the exact specs on that. Not sure again if it matters, but I want to give you an idea and, and look at the, all that dark skim right there. I just want to give you an idea on my system so that you understand. It's 310 gallons, most likely about 350, give or take with, you know, the rocks in there, the sand in there, and you know, the water volume inside the sump. And there is four pounds of media. Well, there's two uh, options when it comes to the BRF CO2 scrubber media and there's a 1.2 pound and there is a 7.5 pound. The 1.2 pound is $6.49, $6.49 American dollars and the other one is $35.99. This media container takes 4.4 pounds of media. 
So depending on how you break it off, if you buy a few of the 1.2 or the whole 7.5, I do the 7.5, you're talking about about $17, 16 to $17 when you use the, you know, to refill it once. And then on the second refill, you actually end up needing more because 4.4 times two makes 8.8, .8, basic math, right? Um, watch it not be, 8.8. <laughs> and, and that one is 7.5. So you're talking about every maybe month using about $40. You know, I'm not doing a calculator. If you really wanna know the real math, just, you know, it's $35.99 uh, for a 7.5, and this takes 4.4, and uh, it, it, it exhausts itself after two weeks of use, so four weeks makes it almost a month. There you go. So about 40 bucks a month that I would have to use in order to keep this. So I'm Conclusion, is it worth it? I mean, it's up to you. I personally think it's a lot of money for the pH especially when we all know that some have been able to get away with 7.8. Um, I Again, I fluctuate between 7.6, 7.8, mainly 7.7, 7.8, but I've seen it go down to 7.6. I haven't really measured my CO2 in here to really see what it is that causes it, whether it's whenever we're all downstairs or you know whatever the case is. Is it worth it? No. I I'm gonna try to implement a Kalkwasser reactor I can maybe extend the life of the CO2 scrubber by an additional two weeks by maybe running it only at night along with the skimmer being that I'm trying to control uh, the amount of nutrients that the skimmer is pulling out anyways. And then the other half of the day using the Kalkwasser reactor so it can dose, you know, um, Kalkwasser. <laughs> but anyways guys, uh, hope you liked the video and I will catch you on the next one.